In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For today's short meditation, let us meditate on the book of Genesis, chapter 50, verse number 20. You intended to do harm, but God intended it for good. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Abba Father, we come before your throne of grace. We know that, O Lord, we need the spiritual nourishment. And that comes from that throne of grace. Speak to us, Lord Jesus, we pray, so that, O Lord, we would be able to cherish these wonderful moments which you have ordained for us. Therefore, Holy Spirit, rest upon us. Holy Spirit, guide us. Holy Spirit, possess us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The day we start our journey with the Lord Jesus Christ, a common thought for every believer is that being a child of God means a lot of privileges. And the moment when we start walking with the Lord, we start doing the right things. And when we start doing the right things, we find a lot of opponents. So when the opponents do harm to us, we are deeply hurt. And it is common that we have a bitterness in our heart, thinking that we are right and God is on our side to punish those people who do harm to us. And it is also common that we take the freedom to harbor bitterness against people who do harm to us. Well, in the beginning, when I was reading this particular verse in which it is mentioned that vengeance is mine, I used to interpret that God would punish my opponents. And it only filled my heart with bitterness and anger. And I was waiting in expectation that God is going to punish them. And God is going to punish the way I think that would suit the way I think the kind of a punishment that they deserve. On the contrary, it only backfired me and all I thought should happen with the opponent happened exactly with me. I realized I only got more hurt when I thought the worst of my opponents. Vengeance is mine does not mean that God will punish our opponent. Rather, it is the promise of God that God stands by us and not with our opponents. And if you are opposed just because you are a Christian, take heart. God always will raise you and shame you. If we claim to be God's children, we have to imitate exactly as Christ Jesus, who forgave his opponents. On the contrary, we harbor bitterness to such a point that we demand punishment from God to our opponents. We need to know that they are not our real opponents, but simply instruments of spiritual forces of darkness. God places such opponents for a purpose because we learn something out of it. And we need to remember that even God loves our opponents. God wants to work the same forgiveness and God expects the same forgiveness to be worked in the life of our opponent. And it is we who set an example of forgiveness when we forgive them. I know it is very hard to forgive a person, but we need to do this act. Because when we do it, we are free from the burden. We no longer carry any burden, but we are free from it. I was reading one of the daily devotion written by Henry Blackaby, in which it mentions our opponent's hostility is our invitation to become involved in God's redemptive work to free our opponent from the spiritual bondage. We look at the life of Joseph as well. God knew that Joseph would forgive his brother. That is one reason why God placed him in Egypt for a purpose. And God fulfills purposes only when we forgive. Otherwise, all blessings are being withheld. So dear friends who are listening, you know, if you have a heart of bitterness, no blessings. But when you forgive, you will be blessed more than your opponent. Try to do that in the power of the Holy Spirit and see the way you will experience the blessings of God coming into your life. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen.